The Phoenix Suns are attempting something very dangerous. This summer, they flipped everything around and traded for Bradley Beal, effectively creating a super team with Devin Booger and Kevin Durant. But the question remains, will this team work and can they win an NBA championship? In this video, we're going to take a look back at the big threes and NBA history, determine what led to the success and what all has failed. When forming a big three, a few things need to be taken into account. For example, the actual compatibility of the stars, the role players surrounding them, chemistry, and a few more things. The concept of a big three has seen mixed results in recent years. Let's take a look at the Lakers, for example. They had Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James. And just looking at the team on paper, it's obvious that these three stars didn't fail one another. I feel like a lot of super teams in the past have focused only on the name and less on the fit. So people always give them a pass. But with the Lakers big three, everybody saw the red flags from the beginning. I think the main issue with them was that Russ, Braun, and AD all love to score in the paint. LeBron and Westbrook, in particular, are drivers, and neither is good off the ball. But then you compare them to the Miami Heat or Cleveland Cavaliers. Their big threes seem like perfect fits. LeBron and D-Wade were also ball-dominant drivers, but the difference is they were willing cutters. It's funny because we have always believed that they were an overrated fit, and often that he will offer Lanos of our way to surround LeBron with straight shooters. Kyrie Irving was really the perfect teammate for LeBron because he was able to play both on and off the ball as well as being able to knock down threes to leave space for LeBron to drive. Regardless, Russ was never able to transition into the player that they needed. When the team worked best was when saw Westbrook setting screens and cutting or shooting corner threes. An important aspect of the big three is the sacrifice of one of the stars. In Miami, it was Bosch and the Cavs, it was Kevin Love. They basically turned away completely from their back-to-the-basket playstyle for more of a spacer role. They needed to adapt in order to let the other stars shine. This usually happens to the players that are obviously the third option or players that have the potential to stretch out the floor. On the Lakers, there was not an obvious player for this role. Russ Westbrook was the third option, but there was no way of turning Russ into a floor spacer. Even AD, who probably had a third option mentality, they were not going to waste his talents by putting him in the corner, even if he could have developed into that. I think the two best big threes of all time are the Celtics and the Warriors. Their three players complemented each other perfectly. Instead of one player completely sacrificing his talent, they shared the sacrifice amongst one another. For example, the Celtics. Ray Allen was getting closer to the end of his career, so he relied more on what he did best, which was shooting. Although Ray was capable of doing many other things, his age, as well as the team leading him to focus more on shooting, led to him perfectly adapting to his role. Kevin Garnett too, but instead of focusing on a specific offensive skill, he focused on defense, and he eventually won the defensive player of the year. Then Paul Pierce simply just took less shots, handled the ball less, but became a much better defender. Then with the Warriors, the talent was homegrown, so the adjustment period wasn't a thing. The three players developed into the perfect fits for the team. Draymond was the playmaking defensive anchor, Clay became the knockdown three-point shooter, as well as a defensive star, and Steph became their superstar. Moving on from the three stars, we had to take a look at the other factors that are critically important for the big three to work really well. One of these factors is the role players surrounding the big three. Let's take a look at the Lakers because they pretty much got everything wrong. The role players that they were able to get were veterans like Ken Bazemore, Wayne Ellington, and Trevor Reza. It's funny because we always talk about how the Lakers picked them up literally in their last year. It looked like all of them became ass at once. I feel like every team that was successful with the Big 3 model actually had really good role players alongside the Big 3. The Cavaliers had Jared Smith, who's low-key one of the greatest shooters of all time, and he became a really solid defender. They also had Ima Schumper, who was a defensive specialist, Tristan Thompson, who was one of the best offensive rebounders in the league, as well as other great role players throughout the run. The Heatles were a bit different. It was obvious when they got good role players and when they didn't. In their first year, there was a point that they were starting Big Z. It took them a year to really find the perfect role players that they needed. In the 2012 through 2013 seasons, they had it perfectly, with players like Ray Allen, Mike Miller, Rashard Lewis, Shane Battier, etc. The Celtics and the Warriors also excelled with this. Look at Boston, for example. Rashawn Rondo literally became an all-star for them. Perkins was extremely valuable, and they even had players like Tony Allen and Sam Cassell coming off the bench. With Golden State, it was the same thing. Harrison Barnes was great for them, as well as Sean Livingston and most importantly, Andre Godala. Another incredibly important factor for the big threes, and even sports in general, is health. Injuries can derail the potential of any big three. The Heat saw this when Dwayne Wade started getting more and more injured, especially in 2014. The Cavaliers literally saw both Kyrie and Kevin Love both out in the 2015 finals. Health is so important because you only have so much with your big three. 
It takes a lot of money to get the three superstars. The Celtics, for example, were never the same after Kevin Garnett got injured. Even the Nets are Harden, Kyrie, and KD mess hella games, and they're barely able to play together. The Warriors, on the other hand, managed to be healthy for most of their runs. The years of Stephen Clay missed most, if not all, of the year, they didn't even make the playoffs. Finally, probably the most overlooked aspect of a big three is chemistry. Some players are going to need to sacrifice. They're going to need to get along. Everything hinges on chemistry. Chris Bosh adapted perfectly to his role as a spacer because his approach to the game and mentality allowed him to. This didn't mean that everything went perfectly. He struggled a lot of times. In the finals, for example, there was games where he scored less than 10 points and once even zero. Kevin Love dealt with a lot of mental health challenges and it was very difficult for him to adapt. He struggled a ton through the finals. When we look at the Lakers' big three, neither of them really sacrificed. They all said they would, but they didn't. A lot of people blame the Lakers, but we gotta take into account that Russ took zero accountability and got his coach fired. When we look at the Nets' big three, this was the biggest reason for their downfall. Kyrie refused to take that vaccine and the handling of the situation pissed Harden off and it was all a big mess. They really lacked a leader and anytime Kevin Durant was asked, he said he wasn't going to get in between anything. So now that we know what makes a big three work and what makes them fail, let's take a look at the brand new Suns big three and give you guys our opinion on how we think it's going to go. The combined talents of Bradley Beal, Devin Booger, and Kevin Durant is undeniable. I think their biggest on-court issue is the fact that they like to score from similar spots, especially the mid-range. Take a look at these three shot charts. Can you guess which ones belong to each of them? They all look very similar, and their hottest zones are around the mid-range. Although all of them are plus passers, none of them is necessarily a passer. From other reports, it seems like Bradley Beal will be the official point guard of the team, which isn't a bad thing because we believe that they don't really need people to set them up. I think their own individual gravity will be enough to get them open because you can't double all three of them. I think a big problem that they're going to have is defense. We didn't touch too much on this aspect previously, but obviously defense is 50% of the game. Although none of them are known as defenders, they are all serviceable, or at least Katie and Book are. But I think they did a good job offsetting this by hiring Frank Vogel as a coach. I think he's an incredible defensive mind and actually helped coach the best defense in the league in the 2020-2021 season with LeBron and AD out for a big chunk. I think that they also did a really good job using the little spending power they had to get quality role players. Unlike the Lakers, who got a bunch of old bets, the Suns picked up a good mix of quality defenders and shooters who are all different ages. One of the best pickers is Eric Gordon at a minimum and Kato Bess Dio, who has quietly been a super solid shooter, 40% from three in the last season. Although we can't really talk about their commitment and chemistry yet because we haven't seen them on the court, we do think they have a really good chance of making it work. Bill will probably need to sacrifice his scoring, but he has done this in the past, especially the last two seasons. I think if they reach their potential, the league should be very scared of the newest big three in the NBA. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down how you think this team is going to perform in the upcoming season. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and please help us out and subscribe. As always, stay tuned for more content coming out soon and peace out. Peace out.